Good morning. Travels with Lucky here and we're in southwest Montana. Today I am going to introduce you to the Montana State Orphanage. But before that, I'm going to check out uh, the local cemetery here in Twin Bridges. I just want to see if it's available and then we will come back after I show you the orphanage and you'll wonder well what do those two have in common and you'll find out something very interesting when I come back to go through the orphanage I mean when I come back to go through the cemetery there is a connection now I have to drive by just to make sure I can get in. We're still in the middle of winter, even though it is March 9th, 2023, by the way. But we've had so much snow and so much blowing snow that I gotta make sure I can get in there so I can do this uh, walk around in the cemetery later. So this is Airport Road. Twin Bridges does have an airport and oh my, look at all of the look at all of the birds flying. There's this is a big wetland area. See if I can zoom in on them. So those are all ducks and geese. Maybe I'll just stop alongside the road here and give you a little bit of an overview of this area since those geese. So this is right by the airport and behind me, behind me you can probably see them and once that car goes by, yeah look at them all. That's pretty amazing. I see them every morning. So those are the Tobacco Root Mountains. Maybe you can hear them too. Yep, they're flying right over me. Look at that. Or over there, lots of them just coming up off of the field. I don't know if you can see that or not. Look at them all. Those are the Tobacco Root Mountains back in there. So over the past few years, they've done a lot of restoration and bringing back the ruby where the Ruby River flows back to its natural state. They've spent, this private people, they turned the land into conservation. Oh, look at them all. Cool. They're going to be coming right over us. Well, that definitely was worth the distraction in the stop. The cemetery is just up here, and it'll be on the left. It looks like there isn't a whole lot of snow, so I think I'll be able to come back here after I go to the orphanage, and we'll show you around some pretty interesting things. And it is connected to the orphanage, which is why I wanted to include it plus this is just a nice little drive gives you an idea of what southwest Montana looks like and it's a nice clear day we're supposed to get more snow tonight so it's a good day to get out and show you around a little bit so yeah like here's here's the cemetery and I'm gonna be uh, 
coming back here. I just wanted to make sure I can get in there. And those are the Highland Mountains back there. And this is the Twin Bridges Airport. They've expanded quite a bit in the last few years. Of course, we don't have big planes coming in, just the private planes. David Letterman and all kinds of those uh, movie star type people fly in here. Also a nice time to come because the roads are still frozen and we're supposed to get some warmer weather hopefully next week supposed to get up into the 40s so it's gonna get pretty muddy around here okay so we're just uh, continue on continuing on down the road this is our cell phone tower here locally and we'll be getting into twin bridges here momentarily I'm going to turn into the rest area because from the rest area you can actually see some of the buildings at the orphanage. This rest area actually has a bike camp and at the bike camp over here people can come in here it's a big bike riding trail as well as motorcycle riding trail but it's a nice little rest stop right along the river you can see the ice breaking up a little bit children's orphanage up there there's actually 27 25 or 27 buildings in there and we're going to drive in there next They have a nice skating rink over here too. It's covered with snow right now because we did get a skiff of snow last night. But they actually have uh, skates and everything for the kids. And there you can see the twin bridges 
water tower. I have to be a little bit more careful because this is a, a major highway, Highway 41 that I'm getting onto. It's kind of a big trucking route. They come in from Dillon as they're coming up from Idaho. I mean, yeah, and um, it's actually kind of a dangerous road because it's only a two-way highway and there's a lot of traffic from time to time and uh, people tend to go too fast on it because they're coming off the interstate going 80 and then they think they can keep going 80 but you really can't. All right, so up here, you've pro if you've ever driven by here and wondered what all these buildings are, it's the old Montana Orphanage. And it's private property. This is not a public area. So, see, she has it posted very carefully. I'm not trespassing because I lease in here and I work in here. But, uh, yeah, you can't just come in here. You have to have permission. And believe me, she watches out like a hawk. The caretaker's home is on the premises, but I'm going to pull over here and stop. Okay, so behind me is the original building of the orphanage. They call it the castle. It's a Victorian style building. So, just to give you a little history on the Montana Orphanage, it started in 1894 and it closed back in 1976, so it was in operation for, what's that, um, 81 years. Originally it was designated, <clears throat> this land was designated to be the teacher's college, but they decided that there was more of a need for an orphanage. And the Lot family donated a hundred acres and that's how this got started now there i said was the caretakers building and back there is the schoolhouse and the gymnasium and then there are other like i said there's 25 or 27 buildings here on this property my intention today is not to give you a full tour because I, I don't have permission to do that today. However, I can just show you these buildings. But we've leased this cafeteria building for our work over the last 12 years and I'm coming to work today so I thought I'd show you this before, before we head back over to the cemetery. So way back there, well not way back there, but just on the other side of these buildings is the Beaverhead River. It joins up and uh, eventually goes into the Jefferson. So It's kind of an interesting place. There's a lot of videos, uh, well, not a lot, but there are a few videos out there about the orphanage. There's one about the ghosts, and they tend to sensationalize it quite a bit. I'm not really doing that because I've met a lot of people throughout the, the years who actually have 
grown up here. They lived here or they worked here. And now, of course, they're either um, not around anymore, dead, or pretty old. But the people I've met were grateful to have had an opportunity to actually have a place where they could live. So over the course of its history, they've housed over 5,000 children. And yeah, of course, there are going to be the horror stories, but all in all, it was definitely a need at the time because a lot of people came out here to homestead and they actually just couldn't quite make it. They had children and they couldn't uh, take care of their children or maybe something happened to the husband and the woman has the children. So it was an important place in its day. <clears throat> come back in here and warm my hands up. It's pretty cold outside. It's like, oh, I'm not sure. I think when I left home it was 10 or something like that. But I'm going to do a little work and then uh, we'll come back and we'll head over back to the cemetery and I'm going to take you through there. I think you're going to find it interesting. Hopefully it'll be a little bit warmer when I go back over to the cemetery. Well, here we are, uh, the busy little town of Twin Bridges. Like I said before, there's a lot of traffic on this Highway 41 coming from Dillon because it's off of Interstate I-50. I mean, it's a cutoff road. Uh, a lot of the truckers like to, I think, skip the, I don't know, they can, it's a shortcut for them anyway. But I thought I'd show you a little bit of uh, Twin Bridges here. This is the main intersection. And there's the famous Blue Anchor ahead of me. And then you can kind of see Main Street Market around the corner. I'm not going that way. But I did want you to see this cool building here. And there's the post office. And as I said before, straight ahead is the road to uh, Virginia City and, and Sheridan. Oh, cool. We have another event ahead of us, a cattle drive. I better get out of the road here. Well, that's awesome. Let's see which direction they're going. Can't tell if they're coming this way or not. We'll just pull over just in case. Oh yeah, uh, they are coming this way. Looks like, yeah, looks like they're. Well, I think I'll just get out. Maybe they're moving them up that way. I can't, can't really tell for sure.
there we have a cattle drive coming down the road. So this is real Montana, not the movie. Not the Yellowstone people. <laughs> These are real cowboys. So I'm just going to pause this here and make a separate video of this cattle drive. It's pretty interesting, but it does go on a while. And then we'll just uh, head back on over All to right. the cemetery. Those look like they're coming this way. Cool. So that was pretty much a great tree, a cattle drive right here in Twin Bridges. Looks like they got a ways to go yet, but they sure had good control. Well, that was pretty cool. We had a genuine Montana traffic jam with the cattle drive, so it was a little bit of a delay. You'll have to watch the video on the cattle drive. I'll put a link to it. Um, either at the end of this video or in the comments or in the description, that'll be a fun one. So anyway, we are heading back up to the where we originally uh, started this journey today. Certainly has been a lot of fun. Kind of skipped out on work a little bit with all these great distractions. You can see what happens to the road after a cattle drive. So we're heading back up to the Twin Bridges Cemetery. There are actually several cemeteries around in this area and there's a, there's a hidden cemetery which I won't get to today but it's the oldest cemetery that I know of in the area here of Twin Bridges and I oh, when the weather gets better I'll definitely go up there check out the road oh they moved a lot of cattle I don't know how many hundred but that was a lot of cattle
here's the cemetery here on the right. I think I can drive in there. And I am headed to the back part of the cemetery. I know exactly where I'm going. Remember I said this is connected to the orphanage. So I guess by now you can probably almost imagine, maybe, this is where they had graves for a lot of the orphans. Normally I would walk around, but my hands are so cold. It looks like it should be really nice out, but it's still pretty cold. All right, well, I think I'll stop right here and that way Lucky can get out too. We haven't been here for a while. Kind of give you an idea of where we're at. So yeah, behind me are the Tobacco Root Mountains. And I'm just gonna walk up ahead here a little bit. And I'm looking for the orphanage grave there's quite a few of them in here. And actually on the internet, there's a, a whole list of some of them. This is an old cemetery too. And a lot of the homesteaders of the area are in here. When the weather's nicer, I'll walk around and point out some of the um, common names. I think I need to go around here. Let me flip this around. Get the sun out of our face here. Well, we can't see a lot of them, but I know in this area, not seeing them yet. Hmm. Maybe it's over here. I wanted to show you up close. They have a whole section dedicated to the children at the orphanage who died in here. Hmm. I think that these, see these unmarked graves? They're really old. Like I said, the orphanage started in 1895. So those could very well be the ones from back in 1895. Let's just keep walking down here a little bit. Yeah, I think it's up here, the area I'm looking for. Yeah, these are all, all the children's graves. Kind of sad because most of them are unmarked. Oh, wow. I hope I'm riding, walking in the correct area. See them all? Hmm. It's 
the Marshall family. Some of their children still live here. McLaughlin, Siler. But I'm not finding exactly what I was looking for. Let's go up here and see what we have here. Mm, no. Darn. I thought I was going to find the bigger one. I'm going to keep walking over here. Maybe it's over here. But they had like a whole plaque. that talked a little bit about the orphans. There's Lucky. He knows this area pretty well. Well, I kind of have a feeling I'm jumping the gun a little bit here. I didn't realize there was going to be all these snow drifts. I mean, I knew there was going to be snow, but... I didn't think it would be this drifted over. Well, we can kind of give you a little bit of a walk through anyway. Well, that's the main thing I wanted to show you is those unmarked graves because I thought it was kind of sad. There's so many of them in there. And then this summer or this spring when it gets a little nicer, I'll come back and, oops, just slipped on the ice. I'll come back and uh, do a more thorough video on this cemetery. I have a whole playlist of cemeteries. I, for some reason, I, I find them kind of interesting. Is that weird? Well, I think this will conclude this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it kind of interesting. I guess the unexpected thing about the whole video was the cattle drive. And uh, I'll just have to make a different, uh, separate video on that because I don't want this to get too long. But I appreciate you watching and Lucky's pretty, uh, pretty excited about his channel growing. He's nearing the monetization point. He needs 300 more subscribers. So if you're watching these videos and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe for Lucky's sake. And uh, we look forward to showing you our next adventure on Travels with Lucky. Thanks for watching. Right, Lucky? You gonna thank him for watching? Yeah, you're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. We had quite an adventure today, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you love the snow, don't you? There he goes. Travels with Lucky. Hey, well, let me get the store.